second chapter of the book Flamingo that is he lost spring by and he's jump. In this chapter there are two stories that is first story is first story is sometimes I find a rupee in a garbage and second is I want to drive a car. First story is related to the boy named Sahib who is a rat picker and second story is related to the boy named Mukesh whose family is engaged in bangle making. Now with starting the, we will start the first story of the chapter that is sometime I find a rupee in the garbage. The author sees Sahib every day searching for gold in the garbage dump of her neighborhood. Sahib and his family hails from Bangladesh. His family left Bangladesh as their fields and homes had been swept away due to flood. They came to India in the hope of finding a better life. The author asks Sahib why he does rat picking and doesn't go to school. To this, he replied that there is no school in his neighborhood and if, he, if a school is built, then he would definitely go there. The author jokingly promised to open a school. This promise was like many promises which are made to poor children like him. Never to be fulfilled. The author is embarrassed when Sahib walks up to her one day to know if the school she had promised to open has been built, has been ready. One day the author asks Sahib his full name. She sees irony in the fact that his name is Sahib A. Alam, which means Lord of the Universe. But he is unaware of it and roams about in the street with his friends. Most of them do not wear chappals. When the author inquires about the reason, one say his mother didn't bring them down from the shelf. Another say he only wants to wear shoes. While traveling across the country, the author has not noticed many people moving barefoot. One, ex one explanation for not wearing shoes is that it is a tradition and is not due to lack of money. The author wondered if it is only an excuse to hiding their poverty. The author remember a man from Udipi who as a young boy would go to temple where his father was a priest and pray for a pair of shoes. Thirty years later, when the author visited his town and the temple, she ha happens to see the residence of new priest which was built temple. Some, re some red and white chairs were kept in the courtyard and a boy was sitting there. He was wearing socks and shoes. The writer was reminded of the boy who prayed that he should never lose his shoes if he get one. But she is pained by the fact that the rat pickers were still home shoeless. The author speaks of Simapuri, which though at the at the Delhi miles away from it. The place is occupied by squatters from Bangladesh who came here in 1971. They live in mud structure with roofs of tin and tarpaulin. The place has no drainage system or running water. More than 10,000 rat pickers have been living here from the past 30 years. They have no identity. Yet, they have valid ration cards and their name on the, on the voters list. Not having a, an identity does not bother them. As long as they have food and doesn't have to sleep empty stomach, they have forgotten the green fields of their country as they were unable to subsist on them. They pitch their tents wherever they find food. To survive in Simapuri, they have to pick garbage which is like gold to them, as it is their means of living. Sahib says something, he finds a rup 10 rupee note or a coin in it. The author realized that garbage 
holds a different meanings to both parents and children. For parents, it is the source of their living, providing them with food and shelter. Whereas for children, it is wrapped in wonder. The author next sees an instance of the child's desire for for normal children. One morning, she sees Sai outside the neighborhood club watching tennis. He was wearing tennis shoes, which was probably discarded by a rich boy. These shoes mismatched with his faded clothes, though one of the shoes had a hole in it. It didn't bother Sahib. For Sahib, who was walking his whole life barefoot, it's like a dream come true. One morning, the author met Sahib when he was walking to the milk booth. He was carrying a steel canister. He told the author that he was now working at a tea stall and was paid 800 rupees and all his meals. He did not look happy. In the fact, his face has lost its carefree look. The steel canister seemed heavier than the plastic he had carried earlier. Sahib felt its burden for he had lost its freedom. The canister belongs to the owner of the tea stall where he works now, whereas the plastic bag was his own. In early days, at least he was his own master. Here begins the second story that is, I want to drive a car. In Firozabad, the author comes across Mukesh, a child laborer in the glass factory who wishes to be a motor mechanic. The author wants to know if he has any knowledge about car. He says he will learn to drive a car. Mukesh belongs to a family which is engaged in bangle making. Like many other families there, Firozabad is the hub of India's glass industry where generations after generation has been involved in this business. The author comment on this ignorance of the people of Firuzabad who involve their children in this industry at a very early age, least realizing that it is illegal for children to work in such conditions. If the law is enforced, almost 20,000 children would be out of this furnace. Mukesh is very happy when the author wishes to go to his house. He proudly tells the author that his house is being rebuilt. They walk through the smelly lanes which, were, which are choked with garbage. They go past homes with crumbled walls, houses with no windows where families of humans coexist with animals. They finally enter a half-built stack, one part of which is covered with dead grass. Food was being cooked on firewood stove by a young man, woman. She was Mukesh's elder brother's wife. She is Bahu of the house. When Mukesh's father enters, she gently brings the veil closer to her face. As it is the custom that daughters-in-law would cover their face before before male elders, Mukesh's father has worked hard all his life, first as a tailor and then as a bangle maker. Still, he was a, unable to renovate the, his house or send his two sons to school. The irony is, in spite of all this. He has just managed to teach them the art of bangle making. Mukesh's grand Mukesh grandmother believes in destiny. She has seen her husband going blind, polishing the glass bangles. Every yard and every street of Firozabad is full of bangles of all colors. The bangles, when ready, are pelled on four wheeled hand cards which are pulled through the narrow streets by a young man to the same to be sent to the towns. She family firmly believed that the art of bangle making is a god given that cannot be escaped from. Young boys and girls of the city are seen sitting with their father and mother near 
the lamp welding piece of col colored glass their eyes are more adjusted to the darkness in which they work that is why they end up losing their eyesight early in life savita is a young girl dressed in pink she sits with her parents the solding the piece of glass even in the dark her hands move very fast at her age she does not realize the importance of bangle in the life of an indian woman this realization will dawn upon her the day she gets married this is a tinger of irony here because eventually all girl child labor will become brides and wear bangles the old lady who is sitting next to her has lost her eyesight but has bangles on her wrist as her husband is alive she complains of their poverty in spite of hard work put in by them they had not enough to eat her husband complains of only being able to make a house for themselves a common complaint of every family involved in the bangle making business is that there is no it not enough money to eat the young repeats the complaints of the elder nothing has changed in the city over the past time all initiatives and dream of all the youth have got lost in the hard work the author suggests to the group to form cooperatives to save themselves from the vicious circle of the middleman she is info informed by the people that they if they got get organized they would be beaten up by the police and put in jails these people have no leaders not any awareness about their rights they are caught in the circle of the poverty greed and injustice the author feels that present to district world one of the family caught in the cluster of poverty and burdened by the stigma of caste secondly the people are caught in the vicious circle of shahukar middleman police bureaucrats politicians it is because of such people that the children are weighed down with responsibility at such a tender age the children in turn accept it as naturally as their parents did none dare to deviate the author sees the sp spirit and never said die attitude in mukesh and hope he will free fulfill his dream one day mukesh insists on being a motor mechanic he is willing to walk a long way to the garbe garage to his to give wings to his dreams at the same time mukesh is firmly rooted to the ground he does not dream of flying aeroplane he the author feels that maybe this is due to the fact that few planes fly over firozabad so guys with this our chapter is finished an important question in this chapter is how is mukesh attitude toward his situation different from that of sahib and next is garbage to them is good how do grand pickers of seema puri survive so guys if you have any query comment in the comment box and do not forget to like subscribe and share the video